what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel so in this video today I know yes it's been a little while <laughs> so I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update into basically what's going on with my life so I thought I'd tell you all about you know what's been happening what I've been up to and ultimately sort of what my plans are with this YouTube channel in the future all right so elephant in the room yes you know I sat the games out last week so I thought now would be as good a time as ever to kind of tell you a little bit about how that went, you know, how I felt the test went and overall just my thoughts and feelings about medicine and the GAMSAT. So I started the GAMSAT last week, it would have been, I think Tuesday, and ultimately I felt good. <laughs> like this was my third time sitting it and it was the first time that I'd actually walked out of the testing center and felt like I had actually done okay. <laughs> Which is nuts, right? Because this test is so difficult and it tests you to such an extreme level that it's almost unheard of to walk out of it and feel like you did well. Now, I'm sure this is entirely misguided and <laughs> is well and truly misplaced, but I genuinely felt okay. The only thing I can attribute this to is the fact that I have already said it twice. So this was my third time sitting it. So I already knew what to expect. I knew what the questions were gonna be like. I knew how rigorous the testing procedure was. So I think that helps to kind of normalize the experiences post-test. So even though I was probably feeling the same, maybe because I knew how I was gonna feel, it didn't hit me to such a large degree or such a large capacity like it has in the previous years. Plus it also did help a little bit to the fact that there were questions in section three that I had seen before. Like not the actual specific questions, but the stems themselves, I knew, I had recognized them before. Like yes, the information was changed. So of course they weren't exactly the same questions and exactly the same bits of information, but they were the same concepts. So this did help a little bit. Although there was one question where I kind of looked at it and went, hey, I've seen that question before. You know, I didn't know how to do it last year and I still don't know how to do it this year. <laughs> Which I suppose could be kind of good because it meant that I still don't get it. So there's no point in wasting time in it. So just guess the questions and move on. I think my strongest section out of the test this year would have to have been section two. And that is purely, purely, purely because that is the area where I think you can grow the most. And that is the section where I think you have the biggest area to improve. So I'm not sure if any of you watching this right now have heard of Michael Sunderland, but he's a bloke from Melbourne who basically scored in the 100th percentile two years in a row in section two, and has now opened up this Facebook group where people can post essays and, you know, students willing to sit the gam set or who are sitting the gam set can critique your essay. And even he comes in and critiques your essays as well. And he's got this blog with all of this info about how to approach section two. So basically I just copied his approach almost as well as I could have. So if you are looking to improve your section two and you've already got a bit of a grasp on how to tackle it, check, Google him, check out his Facebook page. Absolutely changed the way that I approach not only section two, but the test in general. And I attribute a lot of my feelings of like positivity surrounding the end of that test with his methodology and his mentality. So overall, I'm feeling pretty optimistic with this sitting. And I guess only time will tell if it's been misplaced or not, but it's really nice now to actually have some free time and kind of sit back and relax and, you know, not stress about always writing an essay, always studying, always reading about some different philosophy or something to try and bolster up my ideas for the essays. It's really nice to be able to give myself a break because that's such an important part of this. We get so bogged down with study and working hard for this one huge test that can be so influential in our lives that we do forget sometimes to take a little bit of a break. And I think that's so important because life is all about balance. You can't fall too far down that one side. You have to maintain a little bit of normality, a bit of homeostasis, I suppose. And I guess that kind of leads into what I'm planning to do for the rest of the year. So I think for the last two years or so, two, three years of my life, I've really dived headstrong into this, you know, productivity, wellness, self-improvement, whole sphere of the world. And I encourage anybody to take their first steps down this path. 
However, it's very, very easy to get caught up into this treadmill of lessons and ideas and philosophies that all of these books and all of these blogs and all of these people kind of present to the point where you don't actually stop and reset and give yourself a break because you're always on that hustle and you're always trying to work and maximize every aspect of your life. And I think I kind of fell down that hole a little bit over the last six months to a year. So I think not getting into medicine this year has almost probably been a little bit of a blessing in disguise because it's allowed me to stop and take stock of my life, reset, and then think about what areas of my life outside of study and outside of medicine that I actually want to improve upon. So I'm using this time, these next 12 months of my life to really start working on myself a little bit more, to basically put all the lessons that I've learned over the last two or three years into practice and focus on the little things, you know, as cliche as it sounds, focus on the journey and not the destination, right? So I'm going to the gym regularly. I'm working really hard at trying to maintain my practice with learning the piano. And I'm just going to relax. You know, I'm working teaching first aid now for a company in Geelong. So I'll be working three, four days a week, saving for a house, trying to take it all in one day at a time and not get too bogged down with making sure that every aspect of my life is working towards some larger goal, whether it be like financial independence or passive income or anything like that. Because although those aspects of the world are great and they're, you know, they're good goals to be working towards, they aren't the end goal of life as a whole. If working towards that isn't going to make you happy, then don't work towards it. And I think I was trying to push that aspect of my life too hard to the point where it wasn't actually making me that happy. So now I'm just slowing down and I'm going to focus on the things that are going to make me happy now, but are also going to cultivate a bit more of a sense of acceptance and a slowing down of my life in general that will hopefully make me happier in the future, especially if I get into medicine next year and things start to kick into gear a little bit more. All of a sudden, I'll know how to stop and I'll recognize that it's important to relax and give myself days off in the midst of five, six day study vendors every single week because it's so important because you just get burnt out and you just get slammed to the ground and you have no energy to actually function anymore. I guess that's a bit of a long-winded rant about my life, about me, about what I'm doing. And hopefully there was a little bit of something in there that you guys can pick up on to kind of remind yourselves just to take it one day at a time, to not put so much pressure on yourself and to ultimately just be happy with where you are today. Yeah, I think that's a good takeaway. Be happy with where you are today. And to finish off, I thought I'd just give a quick little update about this YouTube channel. First and foremost, I just wanted to say, I'm actually so, so grateful for every single one of you who actually watch these videos. I'm not sure if this video is actually gonna get watched that much at all, considering I've been inactive for so long and considering it's just me rambling to a camera. <laughs> but the fact that over the last year, I've built this from zero to, although it's only a small amount, like 375, subscribers like that's 375 individual people that watched my videos and thought they were good enough to actually warrant watching more and actually warrant giving me your support so i just want to initially say thank you so much to everybody who do watch my videos and do actually enjoy my content because it really really <laughs> means a lot like so much. So the reason I stopped making these videos was I had this whole grand narrative in my mind where I would start pumping out these simple study videos and then I'd get into medicine and I'd start med vlogging. However, that hasn't happened. So I kept making the study videos, but I just lost interest. They weren't the reason I made the channel and they weren't what I wanted my channel to become. So I was finding it just really hard to get motivated to make the videos and that eventually is what led to me kind of stopping or having a break. So my plan for this year and for the future with this channel is I will probably still be pretty quiet in the video making front this year. I'll definitely be here interview time and you'll have a video from me either telling you all about how I did get an interview or how I didn't get an interview. Fingers crossed. I get another interview this year because I really, really do want a med vlog. I think it would be so much fun. Like just bringing everybody along for this massive four year journey of my life through med school. And hopefully I can inspire you people who watch it 
to get into medicine if that's what you want to do or to follow your dreams or to you know pursue that path in your life that you're interested in because being able to inspire other people with my journey would just be the ultimate dream come true plus there's like no australian med school youtubers at all at the moment like there's sebastian and i hope he's doing well but other than that i haven't come or i haven't come across any regularly posting australian med school youtubers anyway so i think that'd be really cool to kind of get in and give you another perspective on the australian med school life i guess so i guess that pretty much wraps up what i wanted to talk about today sorry it just feels like i've just been rambling at a camera for the last 10 minutes or whatever so i'm not really sure how useful this video is going to be but because i do want to start documenting my life at some point and i do want to make this a big project to bring all you people along with my journey i did feel it was necessary and i did really want to make this video because I just want to let you all know what I've been up to and what's been going on. So I hope you found this useful, or if you didn't find this video useful, then I hope you at least enjoyed watching it till the end, because if you made it to the end of this one, then that's quite impressive. And yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and hopefully I'll see you sooner rather than later. Bye. Big essay, and even he comes in and critiques you. Critique.